Hi, my name is John Noggle from Relief International. I'll be talking to you today about the professionalization of manual drilling, specifically building capacity. I'm very happy to be able to be with you today to discuss manual drilling. It's something that I've been doing for the past 20 years. And we will look at the steps that are required to build the capacity of the private sector. We will look at the process that takes three to five years and involves training and close supervision in the field. It's very, very important to understand that this is a process. The goal is to create capacity. We want to create a capacity with numerous drilling enterprises, with quality control firms, with social mobilization organizations, with tool makers, with pump suppliers and repairers to form a complete professional manual drilling sector that can respond to tenders and install high quality, low cost wells. Why the private sector? Well, businesses are motivated by profit, and manual well drilling should be profitable. Private enterprises respond to demand from governments, from donors, from private clients. This demand allows them to continually improve the quality of their products and reduce the costs. It's amazing. Most of the things that we get, we find in the private sector. We find things in rural markets, remote from the towns, where we would least expect to find them. However, private sector is getting profit by being there. It is critical to remember that this is a capacity building program. It's an investment in the future. When we say that manually drilled wells can be drilled for four to 10 times less cost than a mechanically drilled well, we mean that once the capacity is available locally. We cannot immediately go to low cost wells. However, when we've been doing recent programs, we have found that the manually drilled wells during the capacity building process are less expensive than machine drilled wells in the same area. In Chad, during the capacity building process, more than 500 wells were installed. But the big payoff comes in the future. When the capacity is built, there are plenty of private enterprises to drill the wells, and you get lots of wells for low cost. The steps in the program are an analysis of the actual situation. Is it feasible to do manual drilling? Who will be the enterprises that will do the drilling? Is the government accepting of manual drilling as a solution? Once we decide that it's possible, then we move forward. We have to do some sensitization of the key actors. This includes the government, NGOs, donors. We have to get them to understand that manual drilling is a complementary activity to machine drilling and hand dug wells. Once we've selected the participants, the people who will be doing the training, the people who will be trained, we have to develop training programs based on their skills and their lack of skills. So the training programs will be training tool makers, they'll be training well drillers in drilling techniques, they'll be training businesses in how to manage their business better. They'll be training people who are going out to so do social mobilization in the communities, to provide uh, training for the communities on how to manage their water points. After there's training, there's follow-up in the field. We can't do a training program where we teach people to use tools during a week and then send them off to drill wells. This isn't sufficient. Training requires coaching and follow-up over a period of several years to ensure that everyone that participates in manual drilling understands the process, understands their function, and is able to do it. We often find that retraining is important. When we take businesses from the informal sector and try to move them into the formal sector, one of the areas where they're very weak is in the preparation of tender documents. We try and give them the chance to do a practice tender that allows them to go through the entire process of preparing and submitting a tender. Once the enterprises have finished all of the training, and as I've said before, it takes three to five years. Once they finish this, they need to be certified. This would be for the quality controllers, the drillers, and the organizations doing social mobilization. They should receive certification from the ministry that's in charge of overseeing their work. Promotion is an absolutely essential function that is often neglected. Promotion means that we have to promote these professional drilling enterprises. 
It doesn't make sense to have them trained if no one knows that they exist, if no one knows they're there. Promotion can be using radio, television, flyers, but it has to be made so that the communities, the government, and the donors all understand that this capacity exists in the country. The first step is deciding if the country has favorable zones for manual drilling. Now Fabio will be going into much more detail on the mapping, but the mapping of the potential is critical. You need to know that there's zones in the country where the water table is less than 25 meters and the soil conditions are alluvial or soft sedimentary. These zones have to correspond with areas where there is a large demand, a, hard, a large population of unserved people. It is critical to have support of the government. Very often in the beginning, governments are skeptical. They don't think that manually drilled wells are appropriate for communities. So it's important for them to understand that a manually drilled well is the same as a machine drilled well, but it costs less. This is why we have prepared a whole toolkit of promotional materials, including technical notes, case studies, videos, for you to be able to present the case for manual drilling to your governments. It's essential to have a dynamic private sector. The private sector will make the tools, drill the wells, install the pumps, maintain the pumps, and train the villages on how to use them. It is unlikely that all of the components necessary for a professional manual drilling sector will be in place in the country. We need to do the assessment, decide the training needs, and train each organization to do their role. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. This requires a commitment of at least three to five years. It requires time for training, follow-up, coaching, retraining, of all the businesses that are involved, the drillers, the tool makers, the quality controllers, the social mobilization, everyone needs to have training. They need to be tested to make sure they've understood the training. They need to have retraining and coaching in the field. Coaching is a critical part of training manual well drillers because manual well drilling is something you learn by doing. You can't learn it from a book. Capacity building is a process. It takes the time. It starts with the selection of the enterprises, an evaluation of their needs, training them to upgrade their skills so that they can do what they need, evaluating whether they've learned the skill, whether they've mastered the skill, if necessary, developing programs to do retraining. If the retraining is successful, we go to certification. At the point of certification, not all enterprises pass. Those that show willingness and motivation get more training and get to do the evaluation, the certification again. Those who are not motivated get eliminated from the program. The training for well drillers starts with training in well drilling techniques. In a country where there are experienced well drillers already, they may just need very basic training to upgrade, upgrade their skills in different new techniques. However, where there's no history of manual well drilling, they need to learn the basics before they can move on to more advanced techniques. The training for the well drilling enterprises in theory, in hydrogeology, is a critical factor. Even in countries where there is a long history of manual drilling, very often the well drillers do not know what's going on at the bottom of the hole. In order for them to drill consistent high quality wells that produce high quality water over a long period of time, they need to know the basics of hydrogeology. Practica has developed an excellent training manual and training modules to bring the well drillers the skills that they need to understand what's happening below the surface of the soil. Another important aspect of training for well drilling enterprises is business training. Most businesses can benefit from improved methods of managing their business. Informal sector businesses do not realize the benefits that they can achieve by having better record keeping, a better idea of what their costs are, where their money is going, where their revenues are coming from. The business training module is set up to bring businesses from the point where they keep no records at all to the point that they can actually submit a viable tender. 
The modules are given over a period of time so that the businesses can learn techniques to manage their business better, go back and practice them, and come back to the training session again with questions. In addition to training in the classroom, the businesses are visited at their place of business so that it can be seen whether they've really understood what the trainer was teaching them or not. And coaching is done at the business level. Training for quality control begins with the development of standards. Standards need to be developed in collaboration with the government, the quality controllers, and the well drillers. It's important to look at standards that provide high quality water while developing a borehole for its intended use. This builds upon the work that's being done by the Rural Water Supply Network on cost-effective boreholes, where boreholes are being designed for their intended use. This avoids designing a borehole for all future potential uses, but for the specific use for which it's being used. As we develop standards for manually drilled wells, we can avoid some of the errors from the past for machine drilled wells. We can end up with standards that really reflect the need for maintaining quality while not becoming overly burdensome or too complicated. Training for quality control, it's important to train quality control firms to work with manual drillers. Although there are firms that have experience in maintaining quality for public works, including boreholes, they have no experience working with manual drillers, with people who are emerging from the informal sector. We need to train them on quality control aspects, but also coaching aspects. The result that we want to have at the end of the day is to have quality control that trains and helps to upgrade the profession as a whole. At the end of the day, we want to have competent professional well drillers. In addition to training for the well drillers, the quality controllers, we also need training for community organizers. It's important that the communities are involved in the process from the very beginning. They need to be involved before the work begins. They need to be involved in deciding where the well will be placed. They need to decide on what type of pump they want to have. This is very important. During the work, the community organizers help the village to meet their obligations, whether it be in participation uh, with the installation of the well or in training the committees to function in order to manage their water point. It's very nice with manually drilled wells that often the community can be much more actively involved and it becomes their well than they can with a machine drilled well. And this is a, this is a benefit but you need the community organization to enable that to happen. After the well is installed, it's important for the village level committee that manages the water point to be able to maintain and manage the water point so that it provides high quality water for a long period of time. Invariably, water users committees will come upon a time when they have a conflict. If there's no external follow-up, to help them to resolve this community-based conflict, you'll get the situation that we see often where a committee has plenty of, water, uh, plenty of money in their um, account, but they have not been able to repair a broken down pump because the members of the committee can't agree. A small intervention from an external trainer can help resolve this problem and allow the community to move on. At the end of the day, what do we want to have? Well, we want to have many more people with access to safe water. At the end of this whole capacity building program, we have quality controllers who can maintain and ensure that the quality is done. We have government oversight that is um, watching to make sure that the wells that are installed are in correct locations and they follow the standards that the government has agreed upon. We have the professional manual well drillers who are doing the work. We have tool manufacturers who are making the tools. We have pump suppliers, installers, and repairers. We have community organizers helping the community to manage these water points. And in the end, we have manual drilling that is in the mainstream. To summarize, I think that the most important thing 
that I have to say, and I've repeated it a couple times, is that capacity building takes time. The toolkit that we've developed with Practica, UNICEF, and Relief International provides a lot of useful information, but it's not a substitute for the experienced trainers. They are needed to provide training in the field and follow-up. Although wells can be drilled early in the program, we have to remember that they are not the goal of the capacity building. As I mentioned, during the capacity building program, 500 wells were drilled in Chad. But that is not the goal. The goal is to create the capacity at the local level to drill the wells. Capacity building is hard work, and it takes a lot of effort. But at the end of the day, the results are worth it. Thank you very much.